thanks for inviting me and um, thanks for making this happen, Teresa. It's amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I think, I mean, listening to everybody speak so far, it's, it's, you know, I've been around for quite a while, so it's quite interesting seeing, hearing some of the themes that I've heard when I was a young man um, come up again. And it's also inspiring to hear some of those themes coming up again because they're also they're just as important as they were when I was young as they are today. I also think also just to, in terms of reading, just looking at the audience, very young audience, it's kind of important to know that there are lots of very big success stories, not only well-known and amazingly talented actors like Adjua, but um, very unknown directors like myself. Um, and that, why do I say that? Because there are a lot of people who are working behind the scenes who are creating work, who have been doing so, who are highly skilled, who are working in ways um, to, to change and to make better the environment for those people who are coming, back, coming behind us or coming up after us. Um, and I think, as I just said, it's good to try and seek out some of those people for advice and for, for, because you wouldn't have been the only person, or you won't be the only person who's, who's kind of trod the path you're about to, tro about to tread. I mean, interesting, um, Catherine, I think in this context, I'd like to say a little bit more about what, just before I carry on, what I do. I mean, I'm also the chair of a, an organization called the Independent Theatre Council, which, which is, um, comprises of over 400 independent theatre companies. So it's the largest independent theatre body in, in Europe, and I'm the chair, and I think it's quite important to note that. Um, I'm also um, a, a, a film artist, which means I make work for Channel 4 and for BBC, and I think we've, we've, we worked together many years ago when I initiated a, um, a, a scheme for non-accredited um, actors into the BBC Radio Drama Company called the Norman Beaton Fellowship. What's interesting, people like Adwa, people like Teresa are working through their careers and many others to, 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 to bring about change. And in a sense, it's really good, actually, that um, that happens. Nobody will argue uh, that young people should be, given, shouldn't be, should be given the opportunity to develop themselves and their dreams to the best of what they can be. But many would also agree that the arts, the digital arts, dance, music, theatre, and so on, um, and in this case drama, are very effective in how they raise young people's confidence, whether they be in drama school, or whether they be in drama class, or whether they be in drama club, um, or whether they actually be in the profession itself. It transforms lives, as, as, as uh, Adjua said. It empowers change. Um, and excellent companies like London Bubble, Weekend, Art, Weekend Arts Club, and um, the 20 stories high in Liverpool demonstrate the power of drama as a force for social change. But I ask to what end? I think the pressure on young people is so much greater than it was when I was, <coughs> when I was young, back in the um, 70s and 80s and 90s. Um, in the past four years, the scrapping of EMA, the raising of tuition fees, the abolishing of housing benefit, perhaps this is gonna happen for under 25s, zero hours contracts, cuts to local authorities, um, all have created a perfect storm that have created even more pressure for young people in education, careers, and life choices. And for black young men particularly, uh, stop and search makes this pressure worse. The environment outside of institutions is also incredibly pressure, um, pressure, pressurized. Meanwhile, the idea of success, what is successful, itself is being defined very narrowly in today's climate in terms of money and, and, and corporate jobs in a corporate world. Whilst at the same time, we are becoming a more unequal society, where 800,000 people have been sanctioned for not subscribing to benefit regulations, food banks are on the rise, and bankers, MPs, etc., earn more money than most of us as they benefit from a circuit of directorships, bonuses, and, and in international property financial investments, particularly in the big cities of Birmingham, Liverpool, London, Manchester. When the underclass stole nappies in 2011 and trainers in the uprisings, they were not thinking about the price of a theatre ticket, but many were thinking about the lack of provision for affordable facilities in their neighbourhoods and the lack of job opportunities, including those that were excluded because of their race or their sexuality, perhaps. Similarly, the students who protested when they did were doing so because they believed in the value of higher education system that served them and everyone regardless of income. Two very recent protests in this country that were dismissed, vilified, mocked and criminalised by the establishment, including the press, parliament and the courts. So what am I saying? What I'm saying that whilst the testimonies of the young people here are really valid and amazing and, and should be encouraged and we want to hear more of those, 
And this, uh, it is also important that we, those of us who are older, the opinion formers, those people who have levers of influence, and parents fight for the kind of world that ensures their intentions are given a fair chance. It's so important for their future, for our future, and for society, as Adjo was saying. If we, don't, if we, my generation, doesn't take responsibility, then we are failing in our duty to uphold standards of equality and social justice. Lastly, and I'm not going to, be, I'm not going to take more than six minutes, Adjo mentioned that theatre changed her life. Well, in similarly, I could, I could echo the same thing. I was a working class boy, and I, I, for, for a part of my teen, year, teen years, between um, 13 and 17, I, I lived in Coventry, and Coventry at that time was called a ghost town. There was nothing to do apart from smoke, drink, smoke, drink <coughs> hang about in, the, about in the streets, um, and possibly just kind of maybe go to school. You know, it was optional. But drama, <laughs> drama is what, I, what got me there, as well as basketball. Um, and um, basically, it saved my life. Um, and there were some very dynamic theatre teachers there who, who made, it, made it possible for me and welcomed me. Um, as an adult, and now as an artist, I've concluded that my place was on the outside. And doing drama helped me realise into my adulthood that being on the outside was valid because my perspective, one that celebrates difference, is sorely needed. This is work we are dedicated to doing at the Red Room, for example, and through, and through Ruckus, another company I have. It's work that offers a different pathway to success. Uh, a pathway that isn't yet written, because it's, it's all a bit of an experiment, what we're doing. And it's work at its heart that involves young adults and new powerful voices from less privileged backgrounds that we hope will shape the future. And that's why I stand here today. That's why I'm here today, because I think, in a sense, it's not just about the people who perhaps are in the big institutions, but also the people who are in the small companies like myself and the other 400 are represented at ICC, who have a responsibility to make those different pathways possible for different young talent.